to the bees language. Let's start with the shortest program we can think of, which is a clock. The first line of bees identifies that it's a bees source code file and we tell it we're on level one of the language and we're not writing a, mod a library module, we're writing a standalone program and let's call it clock. Let's declare a variable, g for global, and let's give it a type of a date, which is the built-in record of, uh, from the system, which contains uh, date, hour, date, minute, date, second, etc. fields, which are the numerical re representation of uh, a clock, system clock. The first function that the runtime looks for, it looks for a, a function called main init, which is going to be our first one-time initialization program. Every block of code in Beats has a prefix telling what kind of code is it. In our case, we're going to be mostly just using in this function, in this program, we're going to be using calc and draw. Calc is a calculation function, and it's going to have the name of main init. And then we indent once we're inside a function. And the first thing we're going to do when we get our one time init is we're going to set up a recurring callback uh, using the loom timer function, which is in the library, and we're going to call the function do tick, and we're going to start with a delay of zero, which means we want it to start immediately. We're going to give it an interval of one second each call, and in terms of the number of repetitions, we're going to use the built-in constant infinity, which means loop forever, updating, calling do tick. Our calculation function do tick is going to uh, merge the system record, uh, the system date record, which we can get by calling the seconds to date library function, and we're going to copy that to our g variable. When you see a three equal signs and a greater than sign, that's a, a signal that you are not copying a single value, but an entire record assignment which has to do, so the, we're going to copy the whole record of a date, which is contains month, year, day, hour, minute, second, into uh, G. The, after calling the main init function one time, the runtime of beads then looks for your main draw function, which is going to be a draw type of function, and Inside a draw function, you're permitted to draw. In a calculation function, you're not allowed to draw. The first thing we want to do is fill the screen. So let's uh, call draw rect, which is our draw rectangle primitive. And inside every drawing function, there is an implied built-in variable called b, so you don't have to waste your time declaring over and over again, passing uh, silly arguments that are in every drawing function known to man, which is b contains the bounding box of our, our window, and let's fill it with the color of beige. I have all 200 uh, HTML colors in our standard library as constants, so you can just use those names. Now let's create a temporary variable called diameter, and let's um, assign it a value uh, of the smaller of the bounding box b dot box times 0 0.8 which means us 80 percent of uh, the height and the smaller of the height and width which means we've inset our square where the clock's going to go nicely in our space and you know, that's the diameter we want to use but we, now we need to solve for the rectangle and so for that we're going to use one of the handy solving functions that are in the standard library so let's create the sub area which is going to be a, a rectangle and let's assign that a rectangle is a record of fields 
uh, left top width and height so it has four fields in it and let's call our solve rect function and give it as the input our total window area which is b.box and we want to pin the solution to attachment point five there's nine attachment points in the adobe drawing systems your upper left corner is one your upper right corner is three the center of the box is five and most of the time you'll be pinning things to the center of something so we'll use a pin point of five and the other constraint we want to give this function is let's use a width of diameter and a height of diameter and when we're done we want to round the coordinates to the nearest integer coordinate round uh, yes no is y and n in beads we don't use true false for boolean now let's create a sub area in the drawing system which is a sub layer and let's use for the area in the sub layer our area variable we just made and let's set the coordinate system to use a pin point of five which means we want our final origin coordinate to be have zero zero in the middle of this sub area now that we've set up a coordinate system and a sub area let's draw the clock background so let's use our draw circle primitive and let's set the center point at zero and let's fill it with green and give it a diameter of diameter and let's stroke the outside edge with the color dark green and let's give it a thickness of four points and uh, we want the stroke to be on the inside of the boundary we just described not the center point or the outside and so there's a position variable which varies from 0 to 1 where 0 is the inside 0.5 is the middle and 0.5 is on the outside of the circle so let's give it a position of 0 now let's draw our hour hand so we're going to say call our draw line primitive we're going to give this one point as a zero, uh, zero. And let's give it a color of brown. And now let, we're going to set the angle in a second here, but then we want it to be have a length of the diameter of the circle times 0 0.3, which means 60% of the radius and we want a thickness a thickness of eight points and we want to draw the minute hand and it's going to start at the same center point of our circle and let's make that an orange line and we'll do the angle in a second and we want to do the length let's do diameter times 0 0.4 make it a little longer and for thickness let's make it a little thinner six point and now let's draw our second hand at a same starting point and let's make it blue and we'll do the angle in a second and let's give it a, a length of uh, uh, the diameter times 0 0.45 times 0 0.45 and a thickness of 4 point we have an error up here where we said length colon it should have been len to be consistent that's what the function needs now let's go back and now our, that's our program in a nutshell we we set up a timer we fill it with a solid color and then we draw the the circle in three lines but we got to set the angle we know that the hour hand needs to be uh, 
uh, set to our date our using our variable g which we set up above which is and we want the hour field in it but we also want it to slowly creep as the minutes go along so we're going to add in the uh, minutes of the hour and divide that by 60 so that as it gets near the end of the hour it moves towards the next hour marker and we need to specify how many degrees we're going to move each step and one twelfth of a circle for an hour is 30 degrees at a step and since uh, angles start at zero pointing due east and we want and the clock starts at tw due north as zero we have to subtract 90 degrees you notice that this is the first usage of the units of measurement in beads beads has all the units of measurement you would want uh, energy power force time all the physical units you use in engineering have are pre-built with all the conversion factors into beads and in this particular example we're using angular measurements we could have used degrees revolutions gradients there's many different measurement units for for degree now let's draw the calculate the uh, minute hand we know that the the minute should be the number of minutes we've done so far uh, plus the uh, number of seconds and there's 60 seconds in a minute so we're gonna let the minute hand creep along too there's six degrees which is 1 60th of a circle and we of course got to subtract our 90 degrees again so that zero seconds I mean zero minutes is pointing due north and now we've got to fix the angle for our uh, second hand so let's do the how many seconds are in the date and we're going to be moving six degrees per step and we've got to offset it by 90 degrees now we are ready to save our file and run it we compile the program and we load the output into the browser and we see if our clock worked fine. Everything to be, seems to be okay. We didn't make any typographical errors. We compile to HTML and then open that HTML file in the Safari browser and can, we can see the clock working just fine and uh, we did a great job.